Lucia, thank you so much for being on Cat on the Loose. It's on, an honor to have you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Uh, when I found out about your work, I was like, okay, I'm intrigued because you said you, you basically specialize on, on, on teaching people how to bring their exes back right. or how to forget about their exes, but mostly how to bring their exes back. So obviously I have a million questions about it. I think most of us have had our hearts broken, have uh, thought about bringing our exes back. Mm -hmm. But I'm going, before I ask the, the <laughs> I wanna ask a tough question first and foremost, but I'm gonna start with a, a tiny story. Okay. Of course I've had my heart broken a million times, but a while back, I think almost two years ago, I was dating someone and I thought he was a great person for me, blah, blah, blah. He broke up with me over the phone and I, I was, of course, licking my wounds for a while. And uh, after a, a, a certain period of time, I, I actually did a post on my social media and I wrote, the only good ex is exercise so you look even better for the next one <laughs> meaning <laughs> in my mind i don't think it's a good idea in general to want your ex back mm -hmm. so when i saw your work and i did listen to a lot of episodes of your podcast wow. i think you do I, I did a, i did a lot of my homework about you and i do think you're great thank you but in general let's start with the tough questions why would it be a good idea to want to bring an ex back? Like, especially someone that broke our heart. Right. That's always everyone's first question. Right. So I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, at some point, if you date long enough, you know, unless you get married and stay married, you're going to meet someone and they're going to break up with you and you're going to want them back. It's not logical, but you're not coming from the logical side of your brain. And always, it's, it's also not always a bad reason why they broke up with you. You know, if, if you didn't cheat, if you didn't take them for granted, maybe they lost interest because maybe you were doing something. Maybe you were too anxious, you were too pushy, you were out of control. And they broke up with you and you want them back. So it's not my job to say, no, you should not have your ex back. It's my job to help you because you're going to want them back anyway. So, but, okay, but let me inter you're saying you're gonna want them back, but what? But, but do you so? And I understand what you're saying it's your job, but but do you think it's a good idea? And my and my headphone is not working, but we're gonna keep rolling. Nice. But do you think it's a good idea to 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 want them back? Do you think, in your professional opinion, do you think it's a good idea? It depends on the reason for the breakup. Sometimes it's a fake breakup where uh -huh. people are triggered and in the spur of the moment they go, that's it, it's over. And then they think about it later and they're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have broken up with them. It really depends on the reason for the breakup. Not uh -huh. all relationships, so most people can't communicate effectively because right. they're uh, triggered. And so they go into the age that they were when that trigger was caused. Uh -huh. So they're, now you're, they're five years old. And if the other person is also, triggered now you have two five-year-olds fighting right instead of two adults you think that people are going to communicate effectively but most people can't unless they worked on themselves so unless there was abuse if you want your ex back i say hey if you're going to play in the street anyway if you're going to want your ex back anyway at least let me show you how to play in the street and not get run over uh, okay now Here's another problem for me also. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously you notice I have a bunch. <laughs> no problem. That's another problem for me. In my case, if someone left me, to me it's kind of like breaking glass. Even if they said they did, they went to therapy or they realize I'm the, the most wonderful woman because it has happened. Like I have had instances that people left me and they realize they made a mistake because mm -hmm. it happens, right? They, yeah. they realize, oh my God, that woman is so fantastic. She's yeah. so hot, she's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> she's so intelligent, she's so successful. They realize they made a mistake and they want us back. Right. I would always feel, ah, what if I take them back and then months down the road, they decide to, you know, make that decision again, to leave me. I would always have that feeling on the back of my head. I would never feel 100% like secure, like I could trust them 100%. Right, so that's why I have the six questions to ask <laughs> your ex when you want them back. Ah, can you tell us? Um, what I don't know are? if I'm gonna be able to remember all six. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is, why do you want me back? What's going to be different? Why should I take you back? 
how are you going to make it up to me? Um, Those are four. The other six you can find on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if, but even if they, they answer, because when somebody wants something badly... Well, they have to give you great answers. They can't just say, oh, well, I miss you. And Th then you trust not, them? And then they give you all the great it's answers? It's up and, to you. Uh, well, no, then there's, there's a probationary period, and you see how they're going to behave. Because people make mistakes. So, I mean, there's my clients, they got back together, and now they're married. And some of them have children, and those children would not exist if I hadn't helped them really? get back together. Oh my God. So, so you think, I understand what you're saying. You're saying in some cases, it can be a good idea. Yes. In some cases it works. Yes. But most of the time, it's probably not a good idea. Well, most exes don't come back. Right. And part of the reason is because people don't know what to do when they want their ex back. They do all the wrong things. They do the total opposite. It's counterintuitive as yeah. to what you should do because you're coming from your fearful brain, you're anxious, yeah. and so they call their ex, they chase them, right, and right. it's the total opposite. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to talk about that yeah. because I saw uh, you, you do mention that, I, I, and I, I completely agree. When somebody breaks up with us, the first instinct, of course, most people is, to cry and say oh my god i miss you don't do this to me oh and i i can't stand when women do that and i beg them right. like <laughs> please have some self-respect yeah do not beg someone i don't care how much it hurts mm -hmm. do not beg someone to, and i've made this mistake of course i think because we humans, all have we all have but you know have some i think self-respect and self-love is like one of the toughest most important lessons we should learn because i think there's nothing more humiliating and awful than begging someone to love you i mm -hmm. think that's awful but most people do do that like you call and you text and the drunk text and like please get me back and i agree with you that's the worst technique to get someone back right absolutely that backfires it doesn't work it doesn't work. never hence you created an entire method and you even have an app which for a lot of people that don't know you are italian i love it right grazie lucia <laughs> you created an app called silenzio yes. for those of you who don't know what silenzio Here means is. it means silence in italian in italian and it, you basically you created this whole army that you call it on your phone see i did my whole part like, <laughs> good for you <laughs> i was listening to your podcast last night and, like, and i'm still thinking like i by the way for the record i don't want any of my exes back <laughs> in case they're listening <laughs> oh and they listen <laughs> and they li that's the we're we also going to talk about that okay how, like because i have a million questions about that why do exes keep listening to our work but, right my <laughs> book, uh, uh, let's talk about the, the app first and then okay. we're going to talk about the axis. But you created this whole, you call them uh, the, the, the no contact army, the no contact army. So let's explain to people what you mean. It's your whole method is if someone dumps you, don't talk to them. Yeah. So we have a slogan. It's called we don't react. We do no contact. And basically that means you disappear like you're in witness protection. You. <laughs> <laughs> Do you block them? No. Okay, so you don't Not block. initially. Not initially. Not, in, not initially. I initially. don't block them because I'm like, hey, if you want to see what mm -hmm. you're missing out, yes. dude, go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Do not block <laughs> them because you're going to use social media to tempt them and to show them yes. that you're moving on. And maybe you're with someone else. Yeah, I don't post my personal life because I think that's a bit much. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I agree. I also don't block mm -hmm. and and th that's another question that I want to ask you and and I think you answered in one of your podcasts why do people dump us and they continue following us looking at our social yeah, media the majority of exes will continue to stalk you why? which is a pain because it's like listen you why? broke up with me go exactly. away leave me alone <laughs> why? so why do they do that so many reasons first of all they want to see if you're doing better without them or they just want to see if you're suffering ah, or how you're doing. They're never going to see us suffering. Right, in exactly. <laughs> a lot of times it's curiosity, but people think, oh, my ex is watching. He must be interested. She must be interested. Usually not. They have to make a move. So yeah. I don't care if they're watching. I don't care if they're liking your posts, liking your story. You do not respond to those. They're breadcrumbs. They're trying to tempt you mm -hmm. because their egos hurt. If you don't speak to them after they break up mm -hmm. with you, if you just uh, accept a breakup and just go, okay, no problem. I wish you the best. 
yeah. and then you disappear, yeah. they're going to be like, wait a minute. Yeah. I thought you were going to be begging me at least. You know, like their ego is hurt, their pride is hurt. And they're like, did she ever really like me? Is she seeing someone else? What's going on? Like curiosity a lot of the time. But Lucia, sometimes, and I completely agree, if you move on, like especially with class like that, okay, you know, whatever. You hurt me, but I'm moving on with my life. Goodbye. And you go and you go do your mm -hmm. own thing. I agree. It messes their ego. Mm -hmm. and it messes their, and they're wondering, is she doing better without me? Right. I completely agree. That works. It has worked for me many times before. But sometimes... Let's be realistic. When somebody dumps you, it's really because they don't like you anymore. They don't want to have nothing to do with you. And many times, even worse, they found somebody else. Yeah. And then they don't care about what you're doing. Well, apparently they do, or they wouldn't be stuck in your social media. It's not that they don't like you. It's that their interest level dropped. Uh, interest level it goes from zero to 100. If they're over 50 in interest level, they're with you. If they go below 50, that's when they... What do you mean if over 50? If someone's interest level on a scale of 0 to 100 ah. is over 50... Uh -huh. Well, how do you measure that? Well, through their actions. <laughs> <laughs> like, when someone's interest level is 90%, they uh -huh. can't control what they say, they can't control what they do. That's when it's like you absolutely know, you don't have to ask. 50 is when oh, suddenly they're taking a long time to respond, they're busy on the weekends. So once they go below 50, mm -hmm. that's when they break up with you. But it doesn't mean they're not interested because maybe they're at 49. Uh -huh. So we just have to get them back over 50 to want to be with you. Okay, so let's say somebody out there listening, I and I'm going to be really honest with all the respect, I still think it's a bad idea in general. I think if some, and, and it's funny because I have a couple of really good friends, best friends, they're my neighbors, uh, two girls, and they were married. And one of them, a few months ago, out of the blue decided to move out like broke the other ones she moved out packed her bags broke her heart just before the holidays and said goodbye and the one that stayed behind asked me you know what should i do and i said move on like start go to the gym take care of yourself like usually my approach is work on self-improvement mm -hmm. uh that it always works for me i focus on myself mm -hmm. like somebody breaks my heart i get hotter richer, <laughs> more Thinner. successful. So I, I come back, yes. I'm the phoenix. Like six months later, I come back even stronger yes. than before. Of course, I lick my wounds. I suffer like hell because I'm very emotional. Yeah. But usually my approach is I get very introverted. Mm -hmm. I go on these major man diets, meaning like I, I don't date for a while. But I totally like turn the energy into myself and I become a much better version of myself. That's how I do it. So if somebody asks my opinion, like these two girls, I told my neighbor like, dude, focus on yourself. Don't take her back. I mean, she moved out on you, but she, they, they made up and she moved back in. Now they're pissed at me because that was my advice. And I stand by my advice. Cause like I said, if six months down the line, she does it again, I warned you. Right. I think it's like reheating souffle, like I said, or trying to, you know, glue up glass. Broken I, glass. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But let's say somebody's listening and they want to try out your method and they don't agree with me. They say, well, I want my ex back, period. I love him. I love her. Whatever. Mm -hmm. She's the man of my life. So can you maybe explain a little more like... You said no contact. So somebody broke up with me yesterday. I'm heartbroken. It hurts like hell. Can you explain a little bit better? Like what should, what are the next few steps? Yeah, well, definitely working on yourself is a great thing to do. And the great thing is, is that if you level yourself up, when your ex tries to come back, you may not even want them at that point because now you're out of their league. So it's there like, why go. would I take you back? Exactly. Okay, so you always <laughs> want to be working on yourself. Now, if they broke up with you because of your uh, attachment style, if you're too anxious, then you definitely have to work on that because you're not going to be able to do no contact if you have an anxious attachment style. Those are the people that are have the most difficult time getting their ex back, and those are most of my clients, actually. Uh, if you have an avoidant attachment style, which it sounds like you do, then we have no problem. Have which one? An avoidant attachment style. An avoidant. Yes, there's three types of attachment styles, how people mm -hmm. attach to other people. Uh, it's not what you think. Because you're very attached. It's not about getting attached. It's about how you deal with rejection. And uh, like if you pull back, 
because the fact that you said, oh, I'm just going to work on myself and not, yeah. that's either a secure or an avoid. An anxious attachment style would never be able to do that. They would be trying to contact their because ex. Because I have made that mistake before. And you Believe learned. Believe me. Yeah, because I've had my heart broken many times, hence Aww. the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I started the podcast. I was married for a long time. Okay. A horrible marriage. Very abusive marriage for 14 years. Wow. So when I got out of that marriage and jumped in back into the dating game, I'm like, I, I, it's chaos. I don't know how to date. And I started telling my stories and I grew this worldwide audience. Everybody sharing their own stories. But I kept getting, you know, tangled up with bad man after bad man. They, they, you know, abused me, cheated on me, lied to me, all that crap. And I, I did take a cheater back that cheated on me, all this, this stuff. Right. So, of course, it's been, for me, the podcast has been a process of learning to the point now, three and a half, four years later, I know my value. Mm -hmm. I know how great and fantastic I am, like the prize that I am. But it was a process, right, yeah. to get here. Yes. But yeah, like I, I've made up all, every mistake you can dream of, right. I have made. So now, yeah, if somebody breaks up with me, I'm you know like, what to do. Okay. Arrivederci. <laughs> right. Arrivederci. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao bello. <laughs> now I'm like, okay, it's your loss. Right. Like, I, now I'm different. But of course, it wasn't always like that. Right. So you're either a secure attachment style or an avoidant. Yeah. But anyway, so to answer your question. Yes. So no contact. And most exes, 90% are going to try to contact you. Doesn't mean they want you back. They're, if you leave them alone, they're going to pop up. Yeah. You know, they just do not go away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would think. But do you think it's because people want what they can't have? That's part of it. Uh, there's something called the lag period. After you break up with someone, you know, when someone breaks up with you, they're not 100% sure that they should break up with you. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, when are you ever 100% sure? You might be 90%, but not 100. And so we work on that 10%, 20%. We work on their, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have broken up with them. And so they always pop back up. And what you do when they pop back up is going to determine whether you're going to get them back or not. And most people, they are inclined to respond because they think, well, I have to respond or my ex is not going to contact me again. I wish. <laughs> if they are, in fact, if you don't respond to breadcrumbs, they will contact you again if they're still interested. If they're 100% done, okay, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. But if there's still some hope there, if there's still some interest, if you, the, the fact that you're ignoring them until they say something significant yeah. is going to raise their interest level, like I said, above 50. And they have to say something, they have to be humble. They can't have an attitude like, oh, you're not responding to me now. No attitude. I tell my clients, as long as they have an attitude, they're not interested in getting back together. They need to be humble and apologetic. Yeah, there's a big difference, right? But I read a while ago, and I don't even remember, it was somebody, one of the relationship experts online, somebody that I followed the work, I don't remember who it was, and she wrote something that really stuck in my mind. She said, if somebody like broke up with you or, or is not with you anymore for whatever reason, they basically put you back into the dating pool. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, go. They don't care if you're having sex with someone else. They don't care if you're kissing someone else. They, they're giving, in, giving you up. Like mm -hmm. they're, they're giving someone else the chance to be with you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do you really want to give the get this guy back that that gave, gave you away to potentially another guy so when it comes to matters of the heart it's not logical uh, the heart has its reasons which reason knows not of and so you're not going to argue with the heart people who've been broken up with their brain scans are similar to people who are trying to get off of coke uh, yeah so if you're trying to tell someone to get off coke you're not going to just say hey just stop doing coke <laughs> Oh, okay, I didn't think of it. Yeah, I'll just stop doing coke. Same with getting an ex back. Hey, stop trying to get your ex back. They're not going to stop. It's an addiction. They're like a crack addict. So I can only help them maneuver through the addiction. Do you ever see cases that you think like, okay, no, you're just obsessed. This is a bad idea. Your ex doesn't want it. Cut it out. So I'm a hired gun. You know, if they hire me, then I'm going to help them unless there's been abuse. If, if, if they tell me there's physical abuse, then I go, no, I'm not going to help you. Um, however, I will help them, but I will also try to plant the seeds that, listen, mm, 
maybe this guy or this girl isn't as great as you think they are, but they don't want to hear that. Right. All I can do is plant a seed. Right. What if the person they want back found someone else? Usually, if they get into something relatively sh uh, after a short time after they broke up with you, it's a rebound. And most rebounds don't work because they're trying to use that person to get over you. Mm. They haven't processed their feelings. So I tell my clients, don't worry about rebounds. So you think that it eventually it's just going to expire and they're going to say, oh, I really miss you. And that's how they come back. Well, I mean, they're either going to get married or they're going to break up. The chances are they're going to break up. And come back to the person they broke up with. If you leave them alone and if you work on yourself and you level up. Okay, so let's go back to the leaving alone. Can you talk us through the process of your silenzio? How does the silenzio act? Okay, work? so I have a panic button here. <laughs> a panic button? <laughs> because, <laughs> so there's a counter. It shows you how many days you've been in no contact. This is the counter. You set the time and the day of the breakup and it starts counting. And a woman actually, she wrote in and she said the app saved her life. Oh. And I said, what? How? And she said she was in an abusive relationship. She was trauma bonded. She was unable to leave. She kept going back. And then she got the app. She used the timer and it gave her strength. Every day she saw it going up, 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 and she didn't go back. Okay. Isn't that crazy? So she, okay, so it's, wait. Let's, let's rewind. Wait, okay, right, are you, are right, you? Right. So somebody broke, she, uh, whoever she was with broke up with her. Well, I think in this case, he was abusive. She was trying to leave. Oh, okay. She kept trying to leave, but she kept going back because she was trauma bonded. Ah, uh, so in this case, she didn't want to go back with him. No, but she kept going back. Uh-huh. So the app helped her be strong enough to not go back. Yes. Okay, I like this one. Yes, and then also the panic button. So What when, is the panic okay, button? Okay, so when you press the panic button, you hear my voice giving you a very good reason why you should not contact your ex. Okay. So I'll press the panic Please. button now and let's see what it says. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you break no contact, you may temporarily relieve your anxiety, but it's only going to be short-term relief if your ex doesn't want to get back together. So it's a different uh -huh. statement every time they press the button. Oh, okay. Just to and give them, incur you know, it's like, oh, I want to contact my ex. Oh, let me hit the panic button. All right, I won't contact my okay, ex. Okay, and then what? So you go so many days. You focus on yourself. Um, if you're going to post on social media, look happy, upbeat. Yeah. No cryptic posts about exes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to send a silent message, right? You want to give them zero attention whatsoever. Take the focus off of them, yeah. focus on you. Yeah, move on with your life, basically, right? Right. And then uh, I found that the golden period, as I'll call it, of 45 to 60 days after the point of last contact. So not necessarily after the breakup, because if you still stayed in touch a week or two, then you look at the point of last contact, count 45 to 60 days, and there's a very good chance that's when you'll hear from your ex. Okay. I've found with my clients. 45 to 60 days. Yes. So at least we have a time period because everyone's always wondering when are they going to hear from their ex? Because everyone thinks they're going to get their ex back next week within a couple of weeks. And it generally takes at least 45 to 60 days to at least hear from your ex. And then even then, it's not a process of you just have a phone conversation. Okay, now we're back together. Just like they didn't decide usually in one day to break up with you, they're not going to decide in one day to get back with you. It's a whole process. It always takes months. With all my clients, it takes months, not because I'm a bad coach, but that's just how long it takes. Right. And two guys, it took them two years. Oh my God. They did not want to give up. And it worked? And they finally got them back. <laughs> but uh, got them back and now uh, and are... uh, Yes, one is getting married this year and the wow. other one, I think they got married also. I am really surprised. I, I don't know, <laughs> I, like I said, I, don't, I, I just have this image that it's like, ugh. I, I... It's not always that bad. Sometimes like the client that got his ex back after two years, he was just showing too much jealousy and insecurity. Mm -hmm. You know, and as women, we want a strong guy, yeah. not someone who's anxious. And so it was a turn off. And so she broke up with him. So he spent, I mean, he wasn't trying the whole two years, obviously, to, to get her back. Obviously, he was in no contact. 
and they would run into each other once in a while uh-huh. and then finally they're back together yeah, i'm sure it's possible because relationships are so singular right each case is a case each situation is a situation in general like i said for me if somebody leaves me yeah i don't want that i i think for whatever reason i don't want to revisit that I don't want to go through that again. I would always have some kind of trust issue. And then I start, and it's funny because my, the way my mind works, Mm -hmm. I start looking at that person like, oh, you know what? He is so right. Like we weren't meant for each other. And he did that, that thing that I didn't like. And that thing that I start thinking that I deserve somebody better in that area or better in that. I just think it's just so complicated to to try to regroup and make it better. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. But in general, it just sounds like, ugh, I don't know. I know. It, it's, it's a it, lot of work. It sounds like a lot of work. And one of, of your podcast episodes, uh, and I don't know, I thought it was a little harsh. That's oh. why I want to say <laughs> Well, listen, I'm known you're for t- tough, tough cookie. Yeah, tough love. <laughs> listen, I say that getting an X pack is like you're in a war. People don't want to believe that. But, but that's the thing, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a war. Well, it right? is. I don't want to be in like, and, and that's another thing. Like, I don't want to fight for anybody to love me. I don't want to, be- I certainly not going to beg anybody to love me. Right. Uh, I think love should be organic. It should be natural. People like, if, if two people want to be together, they should be together. It should be like a two way street. If I have to go and make all this effort, nah, 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 I'm like, okay, I'm out, you know? I know, but that's just the nature of love and human emotions. They're messy. Yeah. So this episode that I want to ask you about, okay. and I think it's the title, if I'm not wrong. Uh-oh. Because I'm going to tell you, <laughs> last night I spent many hours in wow. bed with my dogs <laughs> listening to your episode. I love their short and sweet. But you wrote, if you don't get your ex back, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I should mention, if you know about no contact and you don't get your, and there's a chance to get your ex back and you don't, it's your fault. But I couldn't fit all that into the title. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's an awful long title. So you think the secret is the no contact? It's absolutely the secret. So everybody listening, if somebody, so let's rewind, because I know we're talking really fast and furious <laughs> Because this topic really piqued my curiosity. It piques everyone's curiosity because everyone's been broken up with. Yeah. Everyone's been heartbroken. Yes. And like I said, I, I admit I changed because I've had my heart broken so many times. And I tell stories that people cringe. Mm. I've had people cheat on me on Valentine's Day. My boyfriend cheat on me on my birthday. I've had like the craziest, most horrible. This dude broke up with me. Uh, by the way, I think... I'm going to make a parenthesis and you tell me if you agree. If you're okay. going to, everybody has the right to break up with anyone. Sure. Because they're adults. Okay. But do it in a civil way because I believe in karma and I treat everybody the way I like being treated. Mm-hmm. I've, I've broken up relationships, but look at the person's eyes, be respectful, be kind. Breaking up over the phone, I mean, yeah. come on. That is so tacky, right? That it's, is yeah. so disrespectful. Do you agree? It depends how long you've been dating. I don't, I don't think it depends. It was a few months, but honestly, we were all over each other's lives. Mm. He knew all my friends, my clients. We were literally like sleeping in each other's homes, traveled together. He knew my neighbor. Yeah, we were like very intense. Mm -hmm. I think if you're man enough to be, you know, that intense. Yes. Sit down, have a cup of coffee, you know, like, but breaking up, like, you know, I changed my mind like a child. Yeah. I think for all, I have a big, massive male audience out there. And I know dating apps are transforming big, mature men into like teenagers Mm -hmm. again. Be a man. Look at, 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 at your woman's eyes and say, you know, for whatever reason, I changed my mind and you part ways as friends. But breaking up over the phone, I just think it's really cheesy. Yeah, they don't have the emotional maturity. And what about breaking up over text, which is even worse? Oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. Don't do it. Like, be men up. I tell my clients, if someone breaks up with you over text, don't even respond. I love that. Don't even I would, I don't would even dignify the text I with know. a response. I, I love that. And then they're going to text you again. It's like, did you get my message? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't think I would. If somebody broke up with me over text, mm. I agree with you. I don't even think I would dignify Yeah, what's, what's to respond? Yeah, it, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I think, especially, man, be gentlemen. If you're dating someone, 
talk to them like the same way that you talk to them when you want to take them on a date, when you ask them to be your girlfriend, when you ask them to be exclusive, you know, treat women with the same kindness that you want your daughters to be treated, Mm -hmm. your sisters, your mom, right? That's what I always say. So to me, that was like, and that's what I'm saying. Like months later, if that person is still talking to me or even decided like, oops, I made a mistake, you know, I miss out on obviously one of the hottest, (laughs) most fabulous (laughs) girls on the planet. I'm like, yeah, dude, you did, but that's your loss. I don't want you anymore. Thank you for making room for the right one to come along. And why did that guy break up with you after two months? So No, it was more than two months. It was four months, I think, almost five. Because... uh, it. I, I think I told that story on the podcast before. It was very funny. He was married for 25 years, very conservative marriage, blah, 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 blah. And we met on Bumble. And when we met, he told me that he was very, and he looked me in the eyes, like, mm. you know, very firm, like, I'm ready for a relationship. I know what I want. <laughs> and this is what drew me to it, because I had my doubts about it, mm. about, about uh, dating someone who was getting out of a marriage. Yes. So all the red flags Mm -hmm. were down, but he was so like, looked me and said, I'm ready. And that's (laughs) it. And he was so convincing and and reassuring and told me over and over again, oh, you're the girl for me. And and we had so many things in common. We clicked on so many boxes and he kept reassuring me. But then months into it, he told me, I found out he was still on Bumble. And then his excuse was, oh, I don't want to date any one of these girls. It's just massaging my ego. <laughs> and why do you need your ego massage? Exactly. Now, after, <laughs> now I laugh about it. Yeah. He said, oh, it's because after being married for so long, just knowing that all these girls are there. Now, that day, I should have ran out. I should have left. Yeah, and... <laughs> I, you know, when you said you had a short relationship and he broke up with you over the phone, I had a feeling it was because he wasn't ready. And I've heard this story before. When someone has just gotten out of a long-term relationship yeah. or a marriage, I don't care how much they yeah. argue that, I'm ready, I'm ready. No, you're exactly. not. Exactly. Leave them alone for at least oh, a yeah. year. No, totally. Otherwise, you're asking for trouble otherwise. No, I completely agree with you. But he, since he kept saying to me... I don't care oh, what he said. No, I agree. <laughs> now I know. Yeah. But after that, he got out of Bumble he reassured me you know oh, you're the girl for me I want to be with you blah 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 yeah blah, yeah blah, yeah blah. yeah so then one beautiful day he, he said I changed my mind right, okay right. whatever okay bye next and yeah it broke my heart I was super shocked because we were very intense and he was very like all over my life whatever and th- I, I don't hold like you know any hard feelings I, and again, like I said, once I picked up the pieces and I started thinking about it, I agree with you. We many times ignore the red flags. Mm-hmm. And we, we, men do that too, but women, we have a tendency of ignoring red flags. Right, we're too nice. Right. We want to give people the benefit of a doubt. Yeah, and, and uh, as much as, yeah, we, we, we had so many things in common. Like the minute I noticed the dude was, oh, let me see what else is out there. Mm-hmm. I should have said, go for it. And right. I wanted to, I should have removed myself from that situation. But I kept believing the bullshit and I got burned. Right. Or you just say, okay, you're on Bumble, no problem. I'll be back on and we'll just date other people at the same time. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, but... And he probably wouldn't have liked that. Right, but that's the thing. I I just have a personality. At this point in my life, I don't play games. Mm. I don't want to play games. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't don't want to waste my time. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm at a point in my life, I want to have a relationship that I'm really happy by myself. I'm super fulfilled by myself. But I certainly, I'm thankful that he made that mistake because it was better sooner than later, right? right? But I think many times it's our fault because like you said, if a guy tells you he's still married, getting out of a marriage, like don't get tangled up with a guy like that. No matter what he says. No matter what he says. There are never any exceptions to this rule. I once met this guy, he had just gotten out of a seven year relationship. It had only been three months. He was amazing. I'm like, nope. No, it's too soon. <laughs> it's too soon. Absolutely. Because most guys, they will want... And, and this phrase is very telling. Like, if a guy tells you, 
they want to feed their ego mm. ding 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 right like because these dating apps yeah they guys love playing this game like ordering girls like doordash <laughs> like oh oh my god look at all these blondes they yes. want to date me i am so hot and i mean these dudes are like in their 50s or but, so they say oh so whatever 50s whatever 60s. <laughs> but it's making them feel like teenagers again right and act like teenagers and act like teenagers Right. But back to the getting the ex back. Yeah. So I don't want this ex back. Thank you very much. Okay. Ex. I don't want any, <laughs> any of my exes back. But the, for the people that do want the ex back, let's finish this because I still want to ask you, because you also tell people like how to forget the ex before we run out of time. So you use the Silenzio app and you go through this process of like ignoring them. Mm -hmm. So that's the tactic. The, somebody listening you have your heart broken resist all the urge do not contact um, under any circumstance unless you cheated or took your ex for granted and by take them for granted and usually men are the ones who are taking the, their girlfriends for granted usually women aren't taking their guys for granted that means that your ex felt like they were not a priority like they weren't important to you that's my definition of taking for granted so if you did either of those two things it is up to you to get them back obviously because if you cheated on someone you can't expect them to come looking for you but i always say wait at least a month because they need to calm down from the shock and then start attempting but just understand it's going to take a long time if you cheated or took them for granted otherwise if you didn't do those two things yes you stay in no contact until your ex says something significant no matter how long that takes because if they're not ready to say something significant then they're probably not ready to get back together so all you're doing by responding is just showing them that you're still interested and so you appease their temporary anxiety and that lengthens the time that it will take to get your ex back so that's why it's important to be quiet and not say anything you raise their anxiety and you raise their interest what is something significant um hey can we talk and then you say about what <laughs> and then they go about us and you go well what about us you right so you don't just immediately oh sure let's talk right you got to feel them out um you, they have to show that maybe they made a mistake mm -hmm. they're starting to doubt you know you'll know you know, you'll know you feel it yeah and so then when you talk then you ask the six questions <laughs> oh my god so you got to kind of have them a little note to ask in your phone to ask the six questions not all at once just in the course of the conversation find out why they want you back and then like I said they're on probation for 30 days to make sure that they are going to stick to what they said and they really uh, probation for how long at least 30 days do you think that's enough probably not but that's why I said <laughs> at least 30 days depends on the breakup yeah. too um now if somebody cheated do you think it's possible i think cheating oh my god that's if to me that's even worse because how do you trust a cheater again again i understand again what was the reason for the breakup what was the circumstance and what do you call cheating some people will call cheating if you just texted another girl oh come on really yeah no oh. that's cheating so it, you know unless i think there was actual physical contact uh it's not really cheat it may, it may have an emotional cheating so mm -hmm. there's physical and emotional probably emotional is worse because it's like you had a intimate conversation yeah. with this person but there was no sex it's like that's even worse probably yeah, it can be it yeah. can be but do you think that's repairable if both people want to repair it you're gonna have to build the trust that's super tough right and sometimes you have to go to therapy to, to figure out why you guys got to that uh, place in the first place yeah i would always always wonder would you if they're gonna <sighs> cheat again mm, i don't know i'm pretty intuitive so first of all it would oh. depend if i even took them back because i'm like you <laughs> <laughs> right for myself personally uh -huh. for myself it's like if you break up with me good luck trying to get me back uh-huh i like that right see yes yeah but if i do give you a second chance <laughs> uh then um it's because i do trust you however at the first sign of a red flag then i'm out of there for good yeah no same i and i tell you guys the the one boyfriend that i gave I, and i told that story before and people are shocked I had it was the first boyfriend I had after my my horrible marriage he cheated on me on Valentine's Day super creepy story with his ex-girlfriend mm. yeah he was in bed with her the whole day oh my god 
Anyway, and then I forgave him, gave him a chance, dated him an extra whole year. Then he cheated on me on my birthday. I caught him having dinner on my birthday with someone else. I literally saw it with my own eyes at the restaurant. What did you do? Yes, I, oh, big scandal! I threw a glass at his face with whiskey, <laughs> the flowers, the rose got kicked out of the huge scandal. And then you know the whole story is on the podcast. He caught COVID. That was just 20, March 2020. He caught COVID from the girl he was cheating with. <laughs> ended up in the hospital. This is a true story, people. I'm not making this up. Ended up in the hospital apologized to me like oh my god you're the best thing that ever in my life blah, blah, blah. please forgive me i'm gonna get out of here i'm gonna make it and i at that point i was like just get out of the hospital right i don't want you to die mm. true story he died <gasps> true oh story god. yeah he oh died no i'm serious wow. i'm real life like no but serious he died wow. apologized to me from the hospital yeah but so i'm like that was the worst trauma, right, wow. in my life, giving somebody like a second chance because, right. yeah, he, he did it all over again. So, like, to me, I, in my mind, I think like a cheater, they just have this behavior that they think it's okay to cheat and they're always going to cheat. It depends uh, on their age. Usually, obviously, the younger you are, you, the more you're likely to cheat. But as you get older, hopefully, you become more yeah, mature and you realize. Yeah, he was in his 50s, so. He uh, was well, a, okay, yeah, then he if he's pig. cheating in his 50s, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no hope. I don't want to say too many bad things about him because right. he died, but yes. he was a pig. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, you also say like that you help people forget exes. Mm-hmm. So can you talk a little bit about that? If somebody doesn't want their ex back, if they want to forget the ex? Yeah. So... Because um, that can be really tough too. Absolutely. So there's something called FAB, which is faded effect bias. And that means that as time goes by, if you've been in a bad relationship, you tend to forget the bad and you focus on the good. Yeah. And that's also one way of getting your ex to contact you because they'll slowly forget the bad things. So you want to use that in reverse. So instead of thinking of the good, because that's why you want them back, you want to think of the bad mm-hmm. and if make a list if you have to because there's no way the, the relationship was perfect otherwise there wouldn't have been a breakup so you know he chewed too loudly when he ate or you know he did <laughs> <laughs> you know he did this he, did, he didn't work out he had a dad bod whatever <laughs> i love that <laughs> i love that idea yes physically make a list of all the things you don't like about them right and And read it every day if you have to (laughs) yeah uh, it's like your morning prayer every morning read that list (laughs) and and again focus on yourself go on a trip if you have to when you change your environment you change your thoughts especially if you go uh, on a trip you're focused just on what you're going to do on that trip so that's a great way to kickstart the getting over someone i love that idea and i know when people are going through a heartbreak and we're laughing and making fun of it but it can be it's very painful absolutely it's it hurts like hell it's physical pain it's actually. physical pain yeah and, and it's mental pain it's anguish a lot of people get depressed of course i've been there i don't know if you've been uh, yeah there. of course i have yeah <laughs> most of us humans have been there yes but i will tell you guys from experience that if you take the first steps right and you really make an effort and focus on yourself it's such a wonderful exercise and it works wonders like the the, the hard part is the first step right but if you really uh, sw- switch that energy into focusing on yourself and you you talk a lot about that on your podcast like like you say that it, it's i think it's one of the things that you recommend like to uh, to bring your ex back if you start focusing a lot on yourself yeah i actually have um, a meditation to bring take your energy back from your ex because right now all your focus is on your ex and you're actually sending them energy which they feel and when you cut that energy off, they actually feel when you've cut it off. And that's when people often hear from their exes. So I have that uh, meditation on the podcast and on my YouTube to take your energy back. And you're, so, yeah, you definitely want to do that when you're trying to get over them. And uh, don't jump into the dating pool right away, because if you're not over your ex, you're going to go out on a date and you're going to feel miserable. And you're going to go home and want to call your ex. Oh, really? You think so? Oh, that's yeah. That happens all, a lot. Ah interesting because i would have thought that maybe it's something fun to distract your mind not like if, the attention of other people not no? if you're not over your ex because uh-huh. you're going to be com- you're going to be on the date comparing them really yo yes huh. i don't know 
because for me, to be honest, it has worked in the past. Like I put myself out there just for fun and the attention of other guys makes me feel great. Like, ah, all these guys want to date me, even if I don't want to date them. Yeah. You know, just for fun, like to instead of sitting home, like whatever, watching TV and crying, it makes me feel good. No, it depends where in the grieving process you are. Uh. So it sounds if it had been just after the breakup, I don't think you would have felt that way. And also depends on your attachment style, too, yeah. which we talked about earlier. Yeah. Amazing. So how can people find you and, and the app? And you guys should definitely check out her podcast because they're short and sweet. I love them. <laughs> I like to get to the point. No, no beating around <laughs> no, the bush. I love them. That's our style here, <laughs> right? as you notice. And uh, I love your YouTube videos. So can you tell everyone here on Canada Rules how they can find you? Yeah, so you can find the link to everything uh, on my website, theartoflove.net. The Art of Love. I love that. Thank you. And before you guys decide if you, I mean, no, no judgment, if you want your access back, good luck. <laughs> it's a war out there. But before you decide if you want your access back or not, think about working on self-improvement and self-love. I think that's the, my message out of all of this here today. Yeah, and self-worth. Self-worth. I love that. Lucia, thank you so much. It was a huge pleasure having you. You're amazing. Thank you so much. I had this so much fun. So, time, time went by so fast. I right? knew it. I knew it would. <laughs> first love, for, self-love first and foremost. You're, you're gorgeous. You're fabulous. Don't forget to go look at the full video episode of This Cat on the Loose on YouTube and, of course, the audio episode on all platforms where you enjoy your podcast. Thank you so much, Lucia. The art of love. I love the name. Thank you. Thank you. Be safe out there. Don't 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 care too much about your ex. They don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>